Hi everyone, this is going to be a video walkthrough of the various uh, spinal cord cross-section models and slides that we have in the Bio-137 lab. And really everything that you see here on this screen is showing us the same thing, just in different ways. So first let's just orient ourselves to see what it is that we're looking at. Over here on the left, this model is showing us the spinal cord as it sits within a vertebra. Now, this is not something that you would need to know on an exam, but really quick before we talk about anything else, see if you can tell me which type of vertebra this is that we're seeing in this model. Like I said, you will not be asked that on the exam, but this is a kind of a refresher uh, to stretch your brain a little bit before we get going. What type of vertebra is this that we're looking at? Hopefully you realize this is a cervical vertebra, and the way that we know that is because there is one hole here where the spinal cord is, that's the vertebral foramen, and there's a hole on each side, the transverse foramen. And remember, all cervical vertebrae have three holes, so that is a cervical. Now. This part right here is the primary part that we're concerned with in this model. This is the spinal cord. What I've got drawn here kind of uh, blown up a little bit. Just this section is what we're seeing in this image right here. I've just zoomed in quite a bit so that we can see some of the structures that you need to know. Here on the bottom right, this is another spinal cord model without the vertebra so that we can see some of the other nerve related structures a little bit better. And up here at the top, this is a slide of a cross section of the spinal cord. This is one of my favorite slides that we look at because this slide really does look exactly like the images that you see of it uh, in various textbooks or um, lab manuals. <clears throat> it will always look exactly like it does, uh, and you don't have to stretch your brain that much at all to see it. So let's go ahead and look at the things that you need to know. And first, what I'm going to begin with are the parts that you can see in all three models. Now, there are going to be some things that you can only see on one model versus the other, but some of the things you can see well on both models and on the slide. So first, let's look at all of this lighter colored area and it's kind of a white on the two models and a very pale gold or tan on the slide. Now this area are, uh, is called the funiculus <clears throat> and there are different parts. So first here on the top of these models is called the posterior funiculus and also on the slide it's this part right here the posterior funiculus here on the bottom of these slide of, I'm sorry of these models this is the anterior funiculus and we see that here on the slide the anterior funiculus and on each side of the models and the slide. This is called the lateral funiculus. Now, anterior, posterior kind of tells us that you need to be able to know what is the front, the anterior, what is the back, the posterior. And there's kind of a way to orient yourself really easy regardless of which of these models you're looking at or the slide. When we look at this darker staining area, Let's name these parts first, and then we'll come back to how to orient yourself. Now, the darker parts are going to be called horns. So here is the posterior horn. We see the posterior horn on this model and the posterior horn on this model, which means here is the anterior horn, the anterior horn, and the anterior horn. 
And finally, the lateral horn. Lateral horn. So now let's go to how do we orient ourselves. If we look at the horns, the, the, this posterior horn here actually goes all the way to the edge and either touches or almost touches the very edge of the spine. We can see in all three images, it almost touches the edge of the spine. Now that is the posterior horn that touches the edge of the spine. So once we know that this is the posterior horn, that means everything on this side is posterior. Everything on this side is posterior, which means everything on this side, everything on this side is anterior. So that's how we orient ourselves. The anterior horn doesn't extend all the way to the edge, but the posterior horn does. So now we've oriented ourselves. Now something else that we can see in all three images is this part that is the gray matter, the darker staining area that connects everything on the left and everything on the right. This part that, if you think of this as the letter H, it's the cross that connects the two legs of the letter H. And that is called the gray commissure. Gray because this is gray matter. And commissure means crossing over or connecting. So the gray commissure is this part that crosses from left to right. And right in the middle of the gray commissure is a small hole called the central canal. Now the central canal, it looks empty, but it's actually got some cerebrospinal fluid circulating through it. Now, also something else that we can see in all of these images are these lines that pass from the top to the gray commissure or from the bottom to the gray commissure. Now, these will have different names. Here on the top in this image, remember this is the posterior side. So this is the posterior median sulcus. The posterior median sulcus. Posterior because it's in the back, median because it's right in the middle, and sulcus because that is like a fold. We saw some sulcus uh, on the brain. So it's just a folding of this nerve material. Now on the anterior side, on the front, or in this image on the bottom, here we have the anterior median fissure. The anterior median fissure. Anterior, because it's on the front, median, because it's on the middle, and a fissure is a larger fold, a larger opening. We saw when we were looking at the skull, we saw the superior and inferior orbital fissures. Well, here we can see that on the anterior, it's much larger than it is on the posterior. So this is the anterior median fissure, and we can see that on all three images. Now let's look at some things that we can see on some of the models or images, but not on the others. Here in this bottom right, we can see some of these spinal nerve and related structures. So let's see what those are. One side has this large bulb-like area, and the other side does not. And remember, this is the back. So we've been using the word posterior. But another word that fits for in humans for the back side is dorsal. So this whole thing is called the dorsal root. 
but this swollen area is called a dorsal root ganglion. Now a ganglion is a cluster of cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. There's a lot of cell bodies in here for neurons. And this is the dorsal root ganglion, and it lies along the dorsal root. The other side, remember this is the anterior part? Well, in humans, something that ties in with anterior is ventral. So this is the ventral root, and there is no ganglion on this side. So that's another way to orient yourself. Dorsal root, ventral root, dorsal root ganglion. And where those two roots meet, this is our spinal nerve. We can see the same thing over on the other side, spinal nerve, ventral root, dorsal root, dorsal root ganglion. Now, we can't really make out all of the structures over on this model and we don't see it at all on the slide. So let's look at some other things that we need to know on this model over on the left. Now, what we can see over here on the left is some of the stuff that surrounds the spinal cord. There are some uh, meninges, those protective wrappings that are found around the brain and the spinal cord. So let's look to see what we see there. And that's why I have this blown up image. So what we're seeing are these layers right here. That's what we're seeing right here. So this yellow area with the black ovals, that's what this is. And right here at the bottom left, we can see the spine and this membrane that lies on the surface of the spine. So what we're seeing, if we go from the outside in, this area that's kind of yellow and it has these black ovals in it, this is called the epidural space. The epidural space. We'll see why it's called that in just a moment. Now we have two membranes here that are very, very closely uh, connected. They're touching one against each other. And you can see that there is kind of this layer right here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me change color of ink. That kind of separates the two. So what we're seeing is an outer layer and an inner layer with this space that separates them. So let's go from outside in. This outer layer is called the dura mater, the dura mater. This inner layer is called the arachnoid mater, arachnoid mater. And this space in between them is called the subdural space. So we have going from outside in, epidural space, dura mater, subdural space, arachnoid mater. So if this outer layer is called the dura mater, dura, well, on the outside or on the top of or on the surface of, epi, remember that root word, epidural. And below the dura is the sub dural. So epidural space, dura mater, subdural space, arachnoid mater. And then we have this open gap called the subarachnoid space. And finally laying directly on the surface of the spine is the pia mater, the pia mater. Now, if this were a real spine, and these same layers surround the brain, if this were a real spine or a real brain, we could peel off the dura mater and the arachnoid mater. They pull away freely. When you pull them away, there's kind of a gap, and that's that subarachnoid space. But laying directly on the surface of the brain and directly on the surface of the spine is the pia mater, and you cannot pull that away. That is intimately tied to the surface of the brain and spine. Pia means intimate. 
Pia Mater means intimate mother because it is intimately connected to the surface of the spine. Let's go back real quick to a question a lot of students have, arachnoid. Most people are familiar with that word. It means something to do with spiders. And that's because if we look at this area closely, if this were a real brain or spine, it's got some kind of webbing that connects it to the underlying tissue, that pia mater, and that webbing gives it something kind of like a spider web appearance. So that's how it got its name. Now we're looking at the nerve smear. And what we're seeing here is a smear of various nerve cells from the brain, the spine, somewhere like that. And there's not nearly as much going on on this slide as there was on the spine slide. But let's see what we're looking at. So the larger kind of irregularly shaped cells these are neurons. These are the conductive cells of the nervous system. These are the cells that send and receive electrical signals. But first, let's look at all of these background things that look just kind of like dust or polka dots in the background. There's a lot more of those. Those are glial cells. Glial cells, there's different types, but they're all there to somehow support the neurons. So all of this background material, those are glial cells. But let's look at the neurons. The neurons, this large structure that's really, really obvious, that's the cell body. That's where the nucleus and most of the organelles that we learned back in the cell are found. But we can kind of see that they all have these filaments sticking off of them. Now these are the axon and dendrites. We can't really tell which ones are axons and which ones are dendrites in most of these cells unless you are really, really highly trained. They all just kind of look the same. And in our books, it often shows the axon is really long and the dendrites are really short, and that's not always the case. So it's really difficult to tell which are axons and which are dendrites. But Something that we can see usually on a slide, and it's a little bit difficult to see in most of these on this image, but some of them you can see there's a small, darker staining area in some of these cells. And that darker staining area is the nucleus. And if you have a really good slide and really good eyes, sometimes you can see a darker circle still inside the nucleus, and that would be the nucleolus. Now, I cannot see those on this slide. Maybe you can. I don't believe that any of these show the nucleolus. But if you look and you see a dark circle with a darker circle inside of it, the dark circle is the nucleus, and the darker circle inside that would be the nucleolus. All right, so that's everything that you need to know for the slide of the nerve smear and of the spine models and spine cross-section slide. All right, let me know if you have any questions.